A very good afternoon to you. Thank you so much for creating time for us on this 23rd day of September 2020, a day when a lot indeed has been happening in Kenya and beyond borders. KBC Channel 1 Lunchtime News begins right now. Once again, Migori County is on the spotlight this time for chaos that erupted at the county assembly following the reinstatement of the deputy speaker. We'll also be following up on uh, the reactions that are coming forth with regards to the advisory that was issued by the Chief Justice David Maraga to President Uhuru Kenyatta to dissolve parliament, among other issues that we have covered in our comprehensive news bulletin that begins right now. My name is Safina Ching Omar. And our sign language interpreter is Lensa Odingo. Now, we want to kickstart this bulletin straight away and focus on a press that is currently ongoing at the Jubilee Party headquarters. The Jubilee Party Secretary General, Rafael Tuju, is currently speaking. Let's listen in. Yes. Okay, thank you very much. I, I mean, I may just have to add, I'm being told that uh, the other MCA seats, uh, we are still processing those and uh, those are open. Thank you. Yes. Well, uh, there are confidential consultations within the party. I don't need to go into that. But uh, I know the deputy president was here yesterday. Uh, he can pop in any time he wishes. This is his party. Yes. Yes, um, I don't have the Jubilee party position yet. I may have my personal opinions. But uh, when I stand on this platform on Jubilee, on behalf of Jubilee, then there's further consultations which have got to be made before I can pronounce myself on that. Yes. Jana lipofika ilikuwa ni metoka siku siku farmu kwamba nakuja. Miltoka apa kama four o'clock. Yeye atafika maybe four fifteen four thirty. Nilikuwa na kazi hapu jana uh, sanane, nikatoka sakumi, sakumi, sikuwa na mtaraji. Good, thank you. Alright? Thank you very much. Thanks a lot. Good. Uh, that is the Jubilee Party Secretary General Rafael Tuju just talking about the status of the party, a party that has faced quite a number of internal wrangles in the recent past and we will be getting more details about what uh, is going on and the plans by the party uh, going forward. Yusuf Farah is following up that story for us. Now we want to cross over to Migori County. Migori County Assembly proceedings was this morning disrupted after chaos chaos erupted after following the reinstatement of uh, the former deputy speaker George Omamba. Omamba was impeached by his colleagues in May last year alongside the county assembly clerk Tom Opere, Bukira East MCA Matthews Chacha and Emmanuel Abala took office in an acting capacity respectively following court orders. <laughs> On Wednesday, trouble started as five pro Obado MCAs walked into the house which was in session and tried to disrupt the proceedings as Omamba was still the chair. Omamba, former deputy speaker, was recently reinstated to his former position through a court order. The five MCAs were allegedly hiding in one of the offices in the assembly before they made their way into the assembly and started creating chaos. <laughs> MCAs allied to Governor Kodo Badu and who again is ODM sponsored impeachment have been causing trouble in the assembly since Tuesday. The development forcing MCAs to hold a kamukunji over the simmering differences. <laughs> a female MCA was injured in the melee and rushed to hospital. <laughs> Thank you. 
A Northeastern Regional Commissioner, Nicodemus Ndalana, has warned parents who are aiding their children to join Somalia-based terror group, the Al-Shabaab, of dire consequences. This follows the disappearance of three boys who are said to have crossed over to neighboring Somalia and joined the Al-Shabaab. Three boys from Lafay in Nairobi in Mandera County are said to have recently crossed into the neighboring Somalia and joined the Al-Shabaab. The move drawing a stern warning from the Northeastern Regional Commissioner Nicodemus Ndalana. The administrator saying that security operators were on high alert and a manhunt has been commenced. Our yake, to kipatana nayo, atuta sema ni mukenya mwenzetu, to tadil na yeye, vile, to nadil na alishababu wengine, ama maadui wengine, maali walipo, Nairobi, Kisumu, na maali pengine pote injini. The commissioner who presided over the upgrading of Arabia location to a sub-county status urged the residents to foster peace in the region for the sake of development. Our toto munaachilia waende mujue ndi watawarudisha nyuma hii town kama amufanyi vile tumiongea hii town itaenda hata chini mbele ya vile ilivyo hata serikali ikiwa hapa. As you have seen I've done my part in terms of infrastructure development for the sub-county and others uh, I've also taken my uh, time to consider offices for chiefs and I'll continue doing the same and support the security sector. Elsewhere, the victim of last week's bandit attack in Baragoy, Liwani Letipila, has been laid to rest. The burial was attended by Samuru leaders, among them woman representative Maison Leshomo and area MP Honorable Alois Lane Tomaga, who urged the government to find a permanent solution to the Samburu North insecurity. <laughs> Sasa imekuwa ni kuua watu hata kuua wakina mama. Watu ambao hawana hawana defense, hawana ngufu, hawana bunduki, hakuna ngombe, unatembea tu mguu unapigwa risasi. Bila hatia yote. Kwa hivyo mimi ningeambia nyinyi wakaji wa Baragoi, tufumulie na mjue tukiwa viongozi yenu hatunyamasi. Bado tunasema itafuto walivu wale wako ndani yetu. The late Leti Pila left behind young children, some below five years of age. The leaders promised to support the family. Yusuf Farah, Channel 1 News. The Federation of Women Lawyers has lauded Chief Justice David Maraga's advisory to President Uhuru Kenyatta to dissolve Parliament for failure to implement the two-thirds gender rule. The Federation has faulted the current Parliament for not enacting the disputed legislation, noting that Parliament is unconstitutional, hence the call for its dissolution. FIDA say Kenya lacks legislation to implement the gender rule, which stipulates that any elective or appointive board should not have more than two-thirds of its members from one gender. The women had a peaceful demonstration from Uhuru Park to County Hall, then proceeded to Afi House to cement their demands. The dissolution of parliament and holding fresh elections two, is one, an two. opportunity to elect women and provide a space where women and men can compete on an equal platform free of discrimination and bias. We are in full support of the dissolution of parliament and urge all stakeholders to come urgently together and promote the compliance of the two-thirds gender rule. The law is very clear under Article uh, 261. They had the parliament as, it, as we stand right now is unconstitutional, but we are hoping, as we have said, that wisdom will prevail on both His Excellency the President and the Speaker of the House for them to get together to sit and involve women as well. This is an issue that speaks to women and we are appealing to them to also include women to sit at the table and have an opportunity. We now have bills. We currently have one that's at the Senate as well. We are hoping they can seize this opportunity, have a very clear roadmap that has a timeline that they are going to enact these provisions before the 2022 election. Now away from the two-thirds gender rule debate, let's now talk about how to elevate the efforts, efforts to elevate uh, the welfare of the girl child in the country. 
an initiative that seeks to benefit over 3,000 girls with washable and reusable sanitary towels has been launched in Laikipia North. This exercise aims at improving hygiene as well as empowering the girl child who faces a myriad of challenges during the time of the month. Representing the Mogokondo Girls Empowerment Program, Joseph Indirias says that the exercise aims at reaching every girl in the county by 10th of December, which is the World Human Rights Day. Issues in, in, uh, in the community, actually, of um, girls, uh, of girls having a relationship with men to, um, to get uh, the basic needs like sanitary towels. And uh, that is why we have a lot of uh, girls uh, getting out of school because of teenage pregnancy. The beneficiaries highlighted the plight young girls undergo for the lack of sanitary towels. Niria said that at the same time they have been creating awareness on the need to understand menstruation, which is regarded as a taboo for girls to discuss with their parents. We are saying no more lost life, no more lost days, no more sex for pads no more stigma. We Days for Girl International Country Director Bridget Kurget loaded the initiative, saying there was need to break the silence on menstrual health in order to end the stigma among girls. So to ensure that we break stigma within our communities, we go ahead and we, for Days for Girls, we have two components. We have the shield and we have the flannel. So we make sure that we put the shield and the flannel and use the, uh, the panty and also get our volunteers to wear the product. This means that we, we, we tell the community that this thing, menstrual health is a normal thing and we can actually do it in public. So that is how we, as Days for Girls, we do to make sure that we break the stigma. Reporting for Channel One News, I'm Jackie Wambiru. Thank you, Jackie, for that report. Remember, you can interact with us on social media at KBC Channel One. We are streaming this bulletin live for you, and we are also inviting your comments on some of the stories that we are airing and some that we have contained in our online platforms as well. Let's now move on. A section of leaders from God's Mercy Church in Kariobangi, South Nairobi County, want the court to first track a ruling that will end leadership wrangles in the church. According to the group, the church has faced various leadership challenges since the death of their leader, Joseph Minor. A section of leaders from God's Mercy Church in Karibangi, South Nairobi County, are urging the court to fast track the court's ruling that will bring to an end leadership wrangles that have marred the church after the death of their church leader, Joseph Minor. Two parties have failed to agree with one group proposing George Minor to take over the leadership mantle thus resulting to the current impasse. Ni wakuja tukae chini tuchauriane, muongozo wa kanisa upatiwe, wazee wa kanisa wauzishwe, na pia wa mama wa kanisa ambao wako, tuweza kupatia na mwerekeo. This development has emanated from one group being accused of misappropriating funds, a situation that has led to the church seeking to resolve the dispute through the courts. Meanwhile, leadership wrangles of Itkisi County Contractors Association, a situation that now threatens to deny members access to public contracts. This development comes after an interim executive committee for the association was replaced pending elections after COVID-19 curve flattened. Duta Rudi Nyuma, hata kidogo, tutabigania ma contractors awa wote, waripwe pesa sao, pending bills, ilipwe. However, the former officials have opposed the new development claiming to be still in office. Foster Wenje, thank you for watching from Mtuapa and uh, Gladoje Play. You're watching from Eldoret in Wasengeshu County. Ruth Mwasame, watching us from Babadogo and Faith Meli. You're saying you're present. Thank you so much for creating time for us. I'll be sampling more comments when we come back from this uh, short break. Do stay with us.
na msibabaishwe na yale mnayowapitia hata yawe magumu kiasi gani yote yatapita la msingi ni kuweka tumaini letu kwa Mungu aliyetuumba katika kitabu cha Warumi tano, mstari wa tatu, wala si hivyo tu ila mnafurahia kupata dhiki huleta zaburi bonyeza star 811 star 963 hash bonyeza star 811 star 963 hash tonight on KBC channel 1 i'm here on business not interested funny i always thought you wanted corner gym but if you are really not interested so are you willing to buy the gym should julia decide to sell it What's his problem? Exactly. Imagine shock yangu. Nilipoingia kwa nyumba yangu nikapata a stranger sitting there. I've been trying to find out why he would leave the gym to me. And Chorus, what do you remember about him? Tonight on KBC Channel 1. Those stupid idiots are trying to get ahead of me. But I won't let them. That money's going to be mine. Somebody's giving that woman advice. Now she says she wants to speak with Ramon. What do we do, Rulo? What now? No, I don't know. I don't know. Let me think. Let me think, bro. <gasps> Your place is under surveillance, and we know there are more people there with you. Ah, uh, see? You can't say anything, huh? Be careful. You don't want to play games with me. I'm going to give you a chance to speak with your son. But I don't want 500,000. Now I want 600,000. All right, but before I give you a single cent, I want to speak to my to my son Ramon. El paraíso conocimos. With Ramon. Tonight on KBC Channel 1. Since the abolition of slavery, back the mass has been working hard. Welcome back and we appreciate you staying with us now. Moving on, we take you back to Migori County where the Migori County Association of Non-Teaching Staff has threatened to rally its members to abscond duty over withheld salaries. Led by their Secretary General, Dan Onyuna, the union said it will not allow any of its members to report to work if their demands are not met. Have a look. With all indications pointing to a possible reopening of schools in a very near future, Migori County Association of Non-Teaching Staff has threatened to rally members to abscond duty over withheld salaries. Through its officials, the union said its members will not report to work if their demands are not met. This is an ultimatum we are giving to the Ministry of Education to release our money immediately so that the non-teaching staffs can resume their duties. Without that, will mobilize our members throughout this country to abscond duty and stay away from service yes. till we are paid. Yes. The Union Secretary General Dan Onyuna claimed that the Ministry of Education has withheld their salaries since the month of March. They are really suffering. It is my humble request to the government to kindly release the capitation to pay so that we can pay, the schools can pay the non-teaching staff tunaomba serikali na si hata kuomba tunasema sauti yetu isikike kwamba sisi tumeteseka vya kutosha ama serikali ituambie kwamba haitambui kwamba kuna non teaching staff kwa mashure kama mwanzo na sasa na siku zote na milele amina This, as religious organizations from Nyandara County have called for political tolerance in the country and urged politicians to help the country as it gears up for the opening of the economy. Especially kama mambo ya watoto. Kama sasa tunasikia mashule itafunguliwa. Na kama mashule itafunguliwa, hata makanisa wale watoto wa Sunday school. Tunatarajia kwamba 
tutapewa nafasi wa kuja makanisani the clergy through the Nyanjara county interfaith council chairman bishop josam karioki said the leaders sought to be preparing kenyans on the new normal and reopening of schools instead of engaging in non issues for channel 1 news i'm emily k Bade. thank you emily for that report now moving on, the United Green Movement Party Women League has given the executive a three weeks ultimatum to dissolve parliament as per the advice by Chief Justice David Maraga over the two-thirds gender principle. Speaking at the party headquarters, the group further warned the National Assembly Speaker Justin Muturi against challenging the advisory opinion at the courts, saying that they will equally challenge the move. Mr. President. Now is the time to make real the promises of our Constitution. Mr. President, now is the time to give all Kenyans who suffered from discrimination a fresh start. Mr. President, dissolve the parliament today and within 21 days of this statement and stand to be on the right side of history. Mr. President, you can be that president of Kenya who made justice and equality a reality for all Kenyans, people possible. And as that was happening, a community-based organization championing for the rights of the elderly persons in Kilifi County is proposing the enactment of a law to protect aged parents from being neglected by their children. Led by Timothy Mwambogo, the organization Sauti Yawazewa Mijikenda want punitive measures to be put in place to discourage mistreatment or neglect of elderly persons. Timothy Mwambogo, the group spokesman, said although parents are compelled by law to take care of their children, including ensuring the right to education, many grown-up children abandon their parents at their hour of need, forcing them to be destitute. Huwa tunalazimishwa na kama mzee hakumpeleka mtoto wake shule, basi upelekwa kwa chifu na hatimaye hata hushtakiwa kwa sababu ni sharti na ni sheria ya nchi kwamba watoto wote wasome na wazee wahusike. Lakini kama tunavyosema Sheria ni msumeno. Wazee huwa badaye wanaingia katika mateso ya kuteswa na watoto wao ambao wamegarimia kuwasomesha wakisingiziwa kwamba ni wachawi na hakuna neno uchawi. Lakini vijana wamekuwa kila anayesoma hurudi akataka kuchukua mali na kuuza mali ya wazazi wao. Mombogo said many children after acquiring education usually force their parents to divide their property and parents who refuse to comply are often branded as witches and plans to eliminate them mooted. Ila vijana hufikia wakati wakataka kufanya mambo yao hasa kununua mabajaji wakidhani kwamba wanafanya biashara. Nao hujaribu kuwashawishi wazee wauze shamba zao wakiona mzee kufa hafi na shamba hataki kuuza ndio anunue bajaji kumsingizia kwamba ni mchawi na kwa maana ni mchawi basi wanamua lakini baadaye muda mfupi unakuta shamba wameuza wameenda kununua mabajaji kwa hivyo si kweli tunanyang'anywa na vijana wetu the elders also called on the government to rein in on self-proclaimed prophets and sorcerers in the county who were accused of conniving with disgruntled family members to brand elderly persons as witches tungeomba serikali watu hawa ikiwa wataruhusiwa kufanya mambo hayo waweze kuwa na mbinu ya kutibitisha kweli wanaweza kutambua jambo ambalo limejificha lakini zaidi sana huwa ni fitina na hizi fitina huanza katika jamii hakuna jamii ambayo mtu atauawa ati kwamba katika jamii hiyo au katika nyumba hiyo kwa hakuna mtu ambaye anajua Echoing his sentiments, Simon Muvondi, the organization chairman, called on all organizations dealing with culture and protection of the elderly persons in the county to come together and fight social ills affecting the elderly as a united team. Mashirika ya kijamii sana sana, mashirika ya ya kitamaduni, labda naweza kutaja tu kama wazee wetu wa Kaya, wazee wetu ya wa Madika, Taireni Naomba sana kama sote ya wazee tuje pamoja ikuwa hii sauti ya wazee ndio mwavuli wa e, nikitovu katika kaunti yetu hii ya Kilifi. Naomba sana ikuwezekana e, tuje pamoja, tuje tunye mamoja, tushoriane ili janga hili ambalo limekukumba sisi katika mambo yote ambayo umeyasikia. For Channel 1 News, I'm Emily K. Badi. 
And the Kenya Meteorological Department has issued an advisory to residents in Kisi County to brace for lower rainfall, which will range from near average to below average during the current short rains. The weatherman urged farmers to be on the lookout to ensure they plan accordingly to avoid disappointments. Kisi County Weather Services Director Henry Sese is warning that rain distribution is expected to be poor in several parts of Kisi during October, November, December short rainy season. Farmers are advised to consult departments of agriculture, uh, department of livestock, fisheries, and cooperative development for types of activities to be undertaken when you expect this kind of uh, uh, rainfall. In yields will reduce, uh, though not uh, significantly, but it will, will have lower uh, harvesting of uh, the key leaves. Allow us to take another break. We are coming back with much more news. We'll be exploring the latest in the world of business and the world of sports. Do stay for that. on KBC Channel 1. Without my permission, he cannot step out of his room even for a moment. Please forgive me. Please forgive me. Oh, please do not kill me. Please do not kill him. Tonight on KBC Channel One. I'm here on business. Not interested. Funny. I always thought you wanted corner gym. But if you're really not interested. So? Are you willing to buy the gym should Julia decide to sell it? What's his problem? Exactly. Imagine. Shock yangu. Nilipoingia kwa nyumba yangu, nikapata a stranger sitting there. I've been trying to find out why he would leave the gym to me. And... Chorus, what do you remember about him? Tonight on KBC Channel One. Those stupid idiots are trying to get ahead of me. But I won't let them. That money's going to be mine. Somebody's giving that woman advice. Now she says she wants to speak with Ramon. What do we do, Rulo? What now? I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. Let me think, let me think, bro. <gasps> Your place is under surveillance, and we know there are more people there with you. Ah, uh, see? You can't say anything, huh? Be careful. You don't want to play games with me. I'm gonna give you a chance to speak with your son. But I don't want 500,000. Now I want 600,000. All right, but before I give you a single cent, I want to speak to my, to my son Ramon. El paraíso In love with Ramon. Next on. It is highly unlikely that one would catch COVID-19 from food or food packaging. COVID-19 is a respiratory condition and it is mostly spread through droplets. Data from UNESCO shows that half of learners worldwide do not have a household computer, while in sub-Saharan Africa alone, 89% do not have computers and 82% lack access to the internet. As schools shifted to online learning, one man in Nigeria has found a way of ensuring that students from disadvantaged backgrounds are able to continue learning remotely like their more privileged peers. How are you doing this morning? So good to see you! On the next episode... Include
including all communities in growing the country's food basket, has been a priority in President Uhuru Kenyatta's development agenda. The livestock keepers of the arid lands in northern Kenya who have now embraced farming are standing to be counted. Wakati tunaansa ila manisa kuchenga hii greenhouse, tunaansa kubanda haba kwa nyanya. This week on Project 254. Shamba hiyo unafaa sisi sana, sababu yake ili matunda natoka sisi na peleka soko. Watch it on Thursday at 8.30 p.m. only on KBC. And in business, the increased use of online spaces for work, transactions, and learning during the COVID-19 pandemic has led to an increase in cyber attack cases with the phishing ranked as the top in, uh, glo in globally. However, Kenya, which has about 1,700 skilled cybersecurity professionals, faces a shortage given the growing cases of cyber crime. The 2020 Security Culture Report estimates that Kenya will need at least 5,000 thousand skilled cybersecurity professionals in five years. The COVID-19 pandemic changed the way the world contacts business. Companies moved to remote working, governments and financial institutions encouraged cashless transactions, all in a bid to reduce the spread of the virus. The ballooning of online activity presented yet another problem, more opportunities for cybercrime, and data shows online criminals have been busy. Interpol reports that phishing scam and fraud was up 59%, with malware following at 36%, Malaysia's domains were at 22%, while fake news, especially on COVID-19 related information, was at 14%. The 2020 Security Culture Report by Know Before and Culture collected data from more than 120,000 employees across 24 countries to find out exactly how deeply security was embedded into the company culture. Africa on Matters Security Culture is on par with North America, Australia and New Zealand at 73 and leading ahead of Europe at 69. The report further found that cybercrime syndicates are targeting the African continent due to the high degree of digitization, especially on mobile, lack of legal framework, skills gap, and a high level of software piracy in the continent at 57%. The report says Kenya lags behind in terms of human resource to deal with cybercrime. The 2020 Security Culture Report estimates that Kenya currently has 1,700 skilled cybersecurity professionals with about 100 joining annually. The report, the report projects that Kenya will need at least 50,000 cybersecurity professionals to deal with the increasing cases of cyber at the report projects that Kenya will need at least 50,000 cybersecurity professionals to deal with the increasing cases of cyber attacks that mainly target financial institutions. Betty Kiptum, Channel One Business. And internationally, a memorial a monument was unveiled at, the at, a, at a cemetery in Brazil's Rio de Janeiro, dedicated to more than 136,000 of the country's residents who succumbed to COVID-19. The monument, named Infinity, stands as a carved oxidized steel sculpture, sculpture representing spirituality, nature, and concept of perpetuity, where Brazilian families can gather and mourn their loved ones. Here are the details of this and other stories from across the globe. The unveiling of the memorial monument comes at a time when COVID-19 still shows no sign of slowing in the country, with graveside funeral services conducted hurriedly as few family members are permitted to attend. Chris Santos, the architect and creator of Infinity Cemetery, says the memorial monument was launched to help those who are not able to mourn properly or those whose mourning was rushed because of health concerns. Inscribed with the names of some victims, the monument keeps alive the memories of the deceased with many families coming to pay their respects during the pandemic. Meanwhile, 
The COVID-19 outbreak is causing setbacks to the U.S. economy amid high unemployment, but the country is richer, getting richer as the pandemic is further widening the racial wealth gap. A report by the Institute for Policy Studies, which studied wealth changes of 643 billionaires, found that their total wealth increased by 845 billion U.S. dollars from mid-March to mid-August. This means the cumulative wealth of U.S. billionaires increases by 4.7 billion U.S. dollars every day. In contrast, data from the U.S. Bureau of Labor Statistics shows that over 50 million Americans have lost their jobs since March, and nearly 14 million of them are still unemployed. For those employed, their income has dropped by 4.4% on average. Finally, China is seeing a booming demand for rental cars ahead of the eight-day holiday, which includes the National Day and Mid-Autumn Festival in early October. Chinese holiday makers will enjoy an extra day of toll-free policy when they hit the highways since this year's holiday. Since this year's holiday is one day longer, the extension has boosted demand for rental cars. According to a car rental company's manager, his business has been greatly boosted thanks to the advantages of traveling in a private car over jamming into the public transport system as the COVID-19 effect persists. Almost half of the company vehicles have already been booked a week ahead of the holiday. And away from that, the Export Processing Zone Authority is in advanced talks with the county government of Taita Taveta to set up an export processing zone in the area. Officials say the area will be ideal for agro-processing as well as for textile and apparel. There exists a private export promotion zone in Maungu, Taita Taveta County. The national government has been exploring setting up a second one on a public land in Manga areas adjacent to both the Mombasa Nairobi Highway and the Standard Gauge Railway, promising options for farms to be based at the EPZ to ferry their goods to the port for shipments. Officials from the county government of Taita Taveta and the Export Processing Zone Authority said setting up an EPZ at Manga would help create jobs. Tulianzia maneno haya pale voi public participation tukaelezea wananchi eh, kwamba tunataka sasa tuwe na EPZ zone hapa ili tuweze kufungua nafasi ya ajira kwa vijana wengi na kina mama wengi katika county Taita Taveta is endowed with raw materials that could be processed at the EPZ in Manga for export. Katika utekelezaji wa ira ratba ya rais ya Big Four agenda, moja wapo ikiwa ni ustawishaji wa viwanda na kuimarisha nafasa kazi, EPZ ikishirikiana na county ya Taita Taveta inatekeleza jukumu hilo kwa kuhakikisha kwamba tunaanzisha viwanda vya kusarisha mali hapa. Currently the government is undertaking a sensitization program in the area about the EPZ project. And finally, from our sports desk, Marcus Rashford and Marston Greenwood scored two late goals as Manchester United qualified for a fourth round of the Carabao Cup following a 3-0 victory away to Luton Town. Meanwhile, West Ham manager David Moyes has tested positive for coronavirus along with the players Issa Diop and Josh Cullen. Ole Gunnar Solskjaer made 10 changes to the side that were beaten 3-1 at home to Crystal Palace in the opening Premier League match and one Martyr's penalty in the 44th minute broke the deadlock just before the break. There's a bit of handball about that and then Williams goes down, penalty. Well that is so clumsy, so very clumsy indeed and Brandon Williams no Bruno Fernandes on the field so it's going to be Matter against James Shea. It is Matter who makes no mistake and gives United the lead just before half-time. Great time to score. One Matt has done it. 
Nathan Jones' high-flying championship side came close to an equaliser when Dean Henderson, on his United debut, brilliantly kept out Tom Loikier's header before Eric Bailey was on the line to clear the defender's rebound. Here is the free kick then. Swung in dangerously and the header is brilliantly saved. And at the second opportunity, it's cleared off the line. Brilliant from Henderson. He's had Sorsha turned to Rashford and Greenwood in the closing stages and the substitutions paid off as the pair combined for Rashford to double United's lead in the 88th minute. Greenwood. And now Rashford to finish it. That's oh. that. United safely into round four. And there was still time for Greenwood to notch his fast of the season in extra time. United in the final minute of stoppage time with Greenwood. Greenwood. Greenwood does that so, so well. What an impact he's had as a substitute. He set up one, he scored another, and that's United safely into round four, 3-0. United will face a trip to either Brighton or Preston in the fourth round. In other matches played last night, Andrea Molenko scored twice as West Ham United thrashed Hull City 5-1. The Hammers were led by assistant coach Alan Ivan after manager David Moyes along with players Issa Diop and Josh Cullen tested positive for coronavirus before the game. The Carabao Cup third round fixtures enter day two tonight. And there you have it. That's all we had for you right here on KBC Lunchtime News. Thank you so much for creating time for us. But we'll continue updating you on the latest developments online at KBC Channel 1. You can also communicate with me directly on social media at Safin underscore Ching on Twitter, on Facebook, Safin at Ching. Thank you so much for creating time for us. Our sign language interpreter has been Lensa Odingo. Have a lovely afternoon. <laughs>